old age home for nearly 10 years now. So, Dairo. Hope you are a new member who joined us recently. Kindly tell me your name. Devi Ayriyati introduced himself, sitting on a chair opposite to the stranger in the farm or a big college home. Glad to meet you, dear Devi. I am Jacob, who joined this home three days ago. Just three days ago. Jacob replied, Devi, I would like to know more about you. It would be proper if I tell you my history best before seeking U.S. I am a retired college professor from Kuchu. I have none to look after me. My wife passed away 10 years back and we have no children. Unfortunately, I am the only offspring of my parents and no relatives to depend upon. In fact, I wanted to adopt a child, but my wife was against it. She too was a college professor in the same college. She died of cancer at the age of 68. Left all alone, I decided to seek refuge here. The pension I am throwing is given to the managing director of this home for my accommodation and care. To be frank, I am very happy here. Unfortunately, I don't have any serious health problems. Now, kindly tell me your whereabouts, Jacob replies. Very glad to hear that you are very happy in this home. Though childless a man, you are fortunate in a way when compared to me, a father of three children. I am a farmer by profession. Though a graduate, I couldn't seek any government job since I was the eldest son of my parents and my father needed my help in managing the five acres of agricultural land we have. My three brothers and two sisters are all highly educated and they are all employed and settled with their families in the states. Since they didn't want any share of the landed property, I am bequeathed of all the five acres. My parents died some 20 years back. I have been fully satisfied with the farming occupation and my wife Nancy was my right hand, always helping me in the farmlands from morning till evening. All types of farming were there. Thali, coconut, nutmeg, cocoa, banana, mango, and varieties of vegetables. I believe that agriculture is the happiest of all professions. To be in the lap of mother years, savoring their bounties, communicating with their offspring, their plants, animals, birds, flies, is a heavenly experience. Of course, there were occasion, occasional moments of sorrow caused by drought and excess rain. After all, they are the ways of nature. They can post for a moment. David and says, How pressure giving your talk is, dear Jacob? Kindly continue your question. Jacob continues, I have three sons and no daughters. We gave them good education and they were all brilliant in their studies. All got admission for medical studies and became doctors. They are all married and are settled with their families in the States. 
as they desired, our ancestral house was demolished, and at that site they built a large financial house. They visit us once in a year, staying with us just as much. When I took Tommy, I couldn't sit idle. He idled even though the children insisted me to keep away from such a good person. Along with my two laborers, I went into my farmlands in the morning and worked till evening. My sons wanted to take me and wife my and my wife Mercy to their houses in the states and stay with them. But for me, living my land is like living my body. And we are we told them that we would stay in our house till we die. As you can imagine, my sons can't forego their huge income and luxurious life there and work in our country earning very less. On the contrary, our grandchildren longed to stay with us for more days and play in the lap of nature, to be in the company of the cows, dogs, cats, fowls, butterflies, birds, etc. And we too enjoyed their sweet presence. No doubt they yearned for more our presence than their parents. It was with the tears that we saw them all after their vacation here. We learned to accept the reality that our children and their families couldn't stay with us forever since they are all American citizens and enjoy life there. Jacob forced them to wipe out tears from his eyes. Very, very sad. I can read your mind, Jacob. How painful it is for you to be away from your children. And where is your wife? Is he living with them in the States? Jacob says, No. She departed the world, leaving me all alone last month. She had a very serious health problem. She caught fever and was taking medicine for it, but suddenly collapsed in the kitchen in the evening. With the help of the maid, she was taken to the hospital, but she died on the way. Tears started flowing through his cheeks. David says, Don't cry, dear Jacob. After all, she was old like you, and one day or other we have to leave this world. Health is, death is, death is waiting with his chariot to take us all, one after another. I feel that she had a happy death, and we shall pray for such painless tro troubled great death. Jacob then replied, true, she had a happy death. But I can't live any moment without sweet memories of this. She had been my soulmate and right hand for long 60 years. Only time can cure my bleeding heart. He started weeping again. David then said, Calm down, dear Jacob. Don't weep. Did all your children come for the burial of your wife? Jacob, wiping his tears, he said, Yes, they all came for the burial, and after 15 days with me, they went back, leaving me here. They asked me to accompany them, but I said, that I can't leave my house 
and in that I told them that I would stay here alone and the maid would come every day to cook the food for me. But they were not willing to leave me alone. Who is there to care if anything happens to me in night? They asked. I told them that nothing would happen to me since I found no health issues. But they insisted that I have to be sheltered in a very good old age home. Thus, I had to leave my house and the land and they brought me here. They have given a large amount to the manager of this old age home for my care and stay. Before leaving, me leaving me, they said that they would talk to me over on every day. Like me, they were also in tears when they departed me. Thus, I have been living a hellish life here for the past three days. Of course, I get whatever food I need here. The room I stay in very comfortable with AC, TV and all such requirements. But I have no enjoyment in anything. Very little food I take. My mind is full of memories of my wife. I long to go back to my house and land, but I am imprisoned here. My children had read the agonies of their father, pangs of loneliness, tears brimmed his eyes. Then he said, Calm down, Jacob. This is the fate of old parents whose children are a crop. There are thousands of parents like you in hundreds of old age homes grieving like you. This is the way of the present world. Kindly take life philosophically like me and enjoy life till it leaves our body. It is already late now. Let us go to our beds. Good night, Jacob. Jacob also back. Good night, Jenny. It was 10.30 p.m. They went to their beds. Early next morning, they will walk up to the knocking sound on the door. The room boy greeted him with the sad news that Jacob was found dead on his bed. Might be Adia first. So that is the end of the story. <laughs> You want to sum up the session? Please. Separate. Ah, yeah, yeah. Separate. Sum up the session. <laughs> okay, okay, that's right. So, thank you very much for listening to my story. Actually, I wanted to make this story end in a very happy note. But, but, uh, however I tried, it is not ending in happy note. Because the reality, the reality can't be hidden. That's the problem. So, thank you very much. So thank you all uh, participants. Well, very well with our then. Thank you, madam, once again. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. No, no, no.